Thank you to this week's sponsor, Skillshare. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. A place to get inspired and learn new skills and put them to work in impactful ways. Skillshare wants to make the creative life possible for everybody around the world. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes classes and members across 150 countries who come together to find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey. A place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in impactful ways. Skillshare wants to make the creative life possible for everybody around the world. Skillshare can help you make the most out of 2022 with new learning, growth, and connection through creativity. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for everybody who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and skills. Invest in yourself and your personal growth, from photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more. You will find classes that will match your goals and interests. Woodworking, computer-aided design, filmmaking, and much more. One of my favorite teachers on Skillshare is Aaron Draplin. He has such a practical, simple approach to creativity. I can really identify with a lot of the stuff that he says, and I always learn something new. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a free one-month trial to Skillshare. Please support my sponsors. They help me stay here in the shop. Thank you, Skillshare. Okay, welcome back. I'm doing a voiceover because I had a few revelations while I was working on this project. I initially took this picture, made it high contrast, and then tried to do a live trace in Illustrator, and it came out horrible. And I was sitting around talking with Taylor, and she says, why don't you just hand draw it? using Procreate with a pen. And that's what I did. It worked out really perfect. Here you see the reanimation in Procreate. Anything you draw can be turned into an animation. So this is me drawing. I ignored the font because I had already experimented with the font in the Illustrator program initially. Now here I bring that image into Illustrator. Now I'm into Illustrator. It's a JPEG, a low quality JPEG, which is okay. You see the jagged lines. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a live image trace over this. So it will blend all those staggered lines and all those step lines. I don't care. And I want it to look a little hand-drawn comic book, so I'm not overly uptight about it. I had already live traced from this failure of an image the fonts, and I'm bringing the fonts and tweaking them, bringing points in and stuff. When you do a live image trace, it tends to sharpen things unnecessarily. So you can go in and tweak them with the point selection tool. So I was able to bring in the fonts. I want to make sure every little piece is going to be held together in the black line art. Because ultimately when I laser cut it, we want to make sure that all these little pieces stay together. And these little pieces, I can cut them out later or I could just leave them. It's not critical. If they become a nuisance somewhere down the road, obviously, you want to get rid of them. So now here, this is just the JPEG. I'm bringing in these vectors, laying them directly on top of this image in the Illustrator file. And what I like to do a lot, I've talked about it in other Illustrator tutorials, is I'd like to do screen grabs. So now once I'm happy with everything, right now, instead of blending it in the program, I just do another screen grab. I'm making sure all the little pieces are not going to float away once I cut it. So right here, screen grab, I do option control 4, grab it, marquee it, boom, grab it, drop it right on Illustrator, opens up in its own folder, old file, and live image trace, make and expand. Boom. Now all my artwork that was laying on top of each other is one connected vector. And you ungroup it and just grab the black line art, which is what I want one piece of. And I drag it off. And I realize I left the nostril up there is the one thing I forgot to connect. I connect it now. And that is a quick way. I do lots of screen grabs in black and white. And then I just do a live image trace, make an expand. It disconnects all the parts that are connected. And then you ungroup it, and you're able to pull out your black line art. And that's going to be my laser cut object right there, my black line art. And then I would send that out as a PDF. I was up in Boston the other day with Derek after WorkbenchCon. We stopped at an acrylic shop. They didn't have black, but they had clear. They didn't have black that was ready to cash and carry. I didn't want to wait for it. So I just got some clear in their pick and pick and carry spot that's quarter inch clear and this is the retina engraved that's the pdf file brought in now all vectorized after a live image trace in illustrator and i set my settings and i set it to cut i actually didn't realize it wasn't cutting completely through 
So I ran it one full complete time, took one hour to do this vector cut. And then I ran it again at a slower speed and then I was able to get completely through the plexiglass. This is my full spectrum 90 watt laser. And that's a shot with my new Insta360 cam. It has really good wide angle. And that's it. Now we're cut completely through. And you see me picking up now. That hand pen drawn line art now is an object. It's really incredible times we live in that you could just draw something and then within an hour it's a real physical object. It, it really is amazing. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when horse drawn carriages were replaced by cars and that was a thing. Now, just using some Rust Oleum, letting that dry. And now this is my backer color, or really this is the backer of the colors. That's just another piece of quarter inch plexi. I cut it to size off camera. Methylene chloride, weld on number three, is how I'm going to connect the plastic together. I was a little hasty. Can you imagine me being hasty? I knew that you could. So I am gluing the front board to the back board, being careful not to squirt the methylene chloride on the paint itself. It will dissolve the paint and get like black streaks everywhere. Not critical because there's lots of mess to go. But what I really want to do is make sure each one of those pockets are isolated. I don't want colors to weep underneath. One trick Mike over at uh, Total Boat said you could just run clear through the whole thing. Just to give the whole thing a layer of clear, that would isolate every pocket. Um, but in this case, I was just hopeful that I got glue under everything. Using the Total Boat auto pump set there with the high performance epoxy and the, the dyes they provide. These dyes are a little bit more opaque, but I know from experience, this time last year I made the big wall panels that are in that shop, that the light comes through that really nicely instead of using the, the super clear stuff, which would give you obviously more tonal stuff and not necessarily opaque colored plastic. And using the syringes provided by Total Boat, you can get some nice precision squirts. And you'll see here, some of these letters start to weep out from underneath which just actually got me a little pack panicked. I said, that's it. Now I have to need to equalize the colors. So a little bit of white just to give it that real stained glass streaky look, throwing that in there here and there. And now the colors are bleeding a little bit and I start panicking. I'm like, all right, let me mix the next biggest color that's gonna hold that red inside the letters. So I mix up some yellow and I got a little messy there. So I went right to the syringe and this syringe really makes coloring in the lines a lot easier. And you'd be surprised at how many little pieces I've missed. I kept forgetting. Oh, well, not, not forgetting, just not seeing various spots that need to be filled. Because there's so many cavities, ultimately. But you can see the red bleeding there a little bit. It, it ultimately wasn't a problem. If I'd have left it and not tried to equalize the pressure on each side of the cavity, I would have had a problem. So now, if you notice that original drawing I did, provided by Netflix, it was the movie poster they did for this for this TV show. By the way, I have a TV show on Netflix. It's called Making Fun. It airs as of yesterday, Friday, March 4th. It's on now forever. So go check it out. I put some pearlescent in that in-between yellow color to kind of make that sun ray look. I was able to make those sun rays straight with the Procreate program with the pen. You can drag and let the pen snap and it snaps straight. If you know anybody with an iPad, if you don't already have one, Play with the iPad with a pen and then you'll probably buy one by the time you're done. Just using heat to bring out the bubbles and everything. You've got to be careful with the acrylic and also the paint. You don't want to melt it, so you got to go quick with the heat. I got the white pearlescent inside of that. Seeing how I mix the tubes. You see how I'm working on the, the silicone mat provided by Total Boat. You keep your mess on the mat and once it all dries, it peels back up. So anytime I have anything left over in a cup, if I'm not going to need it, I pour it on the mat. It starts to collect all the dots and and all the, the, the gross stuff and pulls it off later when it dries. Now that's just pure clear with the pearlescent blue in it to give it just try to hit every color in the rainbow on this sign because it's fun, you know, because it's for kids. You know, for kids. Ice pick came in super handy. Now here you see me mixing some tonals in the dinosaur himself to try and give him a little bit of a, a 3D effect. I mixed up some teal and then some lighter teal, two cups, Mixing it together, swirling it with the ice pick, getting some pretty decent results. And now the teeth, I used the pearlescent white, and the eyes, I just used the pure white. Try to create some various tones. And I left a lot of the cups laying around the table with various colors, and you see me referencing the original image. So I'm just throwing colors together to get some half tones. You got. 
plenty of open working time with this with this uh, epoxy, probably at least f 30 to 40 minutes, especially when it's in such thin amounts, small amounts. It takes much longer to cure. Like this was finally cured the next morning. So you got plenty of working time. So if you have like half cups full of color, save them. You know, by the end of the project, you'll realize you would have used it as, as a mix-in with some other color. Torch bringing up the bubbles. And right there, you see that mat and all my black diamond pigments and all those syringes. Everything's reusable, even the cups. Now, this is a walnut plank left over from last summer. I ended up making a big judge's gavel. This is a piece left over from that build. And I'm able to get three by one inch pieces out of it. I got four three by one inch pieces out of it, which create the frame. And just quickie, I didn't want to pull out the joiner. So right there you see me mill up all from that one chunk of wood. And I'm cutting all my bevels. I didn't put the notch in for the frame yet, but when I made my measurements, I made sure I came in at least a quarter inch on both length and width so that I could split the difference and have the frame notched in an eighth of an inch on both sides. I didn't give myself enough black around the outside of the plastic border and I didn't want to bury it completely. So I do a very shallow notch here. You see that usually I put the notches in before I put the cuts on the corners. This time I was just mixing it up for no apparent reason. And now I am putting the splines in. You see, I already cut one. I just wanted to make sure it was deep enough. And it's important when you do the splines that you remember type on for the win. Dark type on two. Jackman turned me on to type on three during the shooting of the show and I really enjoyed using it and I like the fact that it dries dark. And then I saw this the other day, type on two at the lumber yard and I grabbed it. And that's it. Using my Starrett square, getting all the brands in. All my support. And my Cezanne saw. No saw. And Total Boat Gleam, making everything nice and choochy. I actually flooded it and then wiped it. So right here it's all still wet, but I'm still moving forward because I can't stop myself. Just throwing some screws in there. Of course the branding, and there we go. Make sure you watch Making Fun on Netflix. Shout out to Jackman, Derek, Pat, Roz, and... Mike O'Dare, the producer of the show, he had the vision. So, Mike, thank you. And thank you to all my sponsors. Total Boat, Full Spectrum, Type Bond, Starrett, and, of course, Skillshare. Go check out Skillshare. Thank you, everybody. I love you.